जय माँ नमस्ते अ फ्यू डेज अगो आई वॉज हैविंग अ टॉक विद डिवोटी शी वॉन्टेड मी टू डिस्कस अबाउट डार्क नाइट ऑफ द सोल नाउ दिस दिस इज अ क्रिश्चन टर्मिनोलॉजी बट इट कैन बी अप्लाइड टू एनी साधक एनी वर इन द वर्ल्ड एनी स्पिरिचुअल एस्पिरेंट एनी वर इन द वर्ल्ड नो मैटर वॉट पाथ वी आर फॉलोइंग द डार्क नाइट ऑफ द सोल इट डिनोट्स द लेंदी टाइम पीरियड in which the individual is struggling towards god realization god realization or enlightenment or salvation whatever they think it is to them uh, when the soul is when the individual is struggling for that that time is the dark night of the soul it's like a long night after which at last the sun rises and it's morning and the light shines forth and the truth is known the soul meets god in whichever way you define it so in this dark night it lasts from the beginning stages of a sadhaka when he or she doesn't find joy in the pleasures of life in the pleasures of this world uh, feels the call of god kind of thing where he or she they want to dedicate themselves towards more towards spirituality uh, yet they are due to circumstances they are still stuck in their day to day life in their worldly life so to say maybe in their job in their career in their uh, in their studies whatever they are doing now the second stage is when they are more and more trying to dedicate themselves towards a spiritual life and though following whatever they are doing they are in their jobs they are they are already doing what they are doing in the world but even after that they are very seriously trying to dedicate a part of their time towards spiritual practices they find it at most difficult to spend time with common people in common chit chat and common gossips or partying or you know going about uh, in worldly pleasures doing this and that any ordinary stuff that in which common people find pleasure they find it in almost intolerable they can't spend time there it's suffocating almost now the third stage is when they are pursuing their spiritual goals very sincerely and the world seems a burden to them the work that they need to do the involvement with the world that they have it seems very burdensome to them and yet they try to as much as as well as possible they try to balance up things also they are continuously struggling with their own lust their greed their desires and ultimately uh, some spiritual aspirant may be lucky enough may be fortunate enough to be able to dedicate wholly towards a spiritual life uh, whether becoming joining a monastery joining an ashram or leaving everything and going away to some solitary place to pursue their own life but uh, everybody is not so fortunate so they have to balance both their work life their worldly life and their spiritual life during these struggles uh, a sadhaka might be feeling depressed sometimes they might be feeling very low sometimes they might be feeling very angry or frustrated with themselves or unworthy or undeserving and they can't uh, really find a reason why god isn't giving them enlightenment or giving them some experiences while they have been doing their spiritual practices maybe for many years now so during these stages which seems like a long night before the break of dawn sadhaka needs to remember a few things he needs to be patient right patience is needed in this life you need to know that the flower uh, the bud comes up and the flower will bloom in its own time you can't forcefully uh, try to open the petals of a rose and try to make it bloom then you will tear up the rose completely the rose the rose bud will be destroyed so you need to be patient and you need to trust the process natural process the only thing that you can do is keep your focus on it eventually you will bloom the flower will bloom eventually the enlightenment will come and 
The second thing is being a bit detached. You need to understand that this mind body complex is not you. You are this video game character that has come into play. You are the eternal soul that is outside sitting outside the video game. Your consciousness is being channelized into this body mind character that you are. So this body mind character, this person is not you. You are the eternal soul sitting outside the video game and playing this character. What you need to do is as a, in a third person perspective, you need to understand this character. You need to pat it on its back and say and motivate and encourage it without any judgment or criticism. You need to encourage and motivate it always and keep it kind of company. You must say to it that I am with you. Don't fear. Don't get angry. Don't get sad. I am with you. It's okay. Just keep going. Just keep going. It's okay. I am with you. It's kind of that, right? You need to be with this this person that you think you are you are not actually this person you need to be with this person so keep in mind this third person perspective be detached with this body mind complex with this character and give it all your support and love and unconditional acceptance don't judge and criticize unnecessarily and whatever comes up the emotions just know it that it's being released through you so let it get released. Anger, frustration, whatever you feel, just feel it and let it go. It's okay to feel that way. Be angry whenever you feel angry. There's no need to suppress. Feel frustrated. Feel sad when you need to feel sad. It's okay. But be there for yourself. Be there with this person, with this character, pat its back and say to it that, yeah, you are with him or her. So this detachment and being present with this character. Another important thing is to stay balanced, not overdoing anything. You see, if you go to a gym and you or you're practicing, you know, to stay fit, you can't expect that you will become muscular and you will get a very good body in a few days, in a very few days. You can't work at it for, you know, 12 hours and then suddenly tomorrow you have a lot of muscles. No, the, your body will break down. So you need to understand that the meditation practices, your sadhana practices, everything, even if you if you say that, well, I can't do meditation for long hours and my nervous system doesn't allow it, then it's okay. You know, karma yoga is for them. You can do whatever work you are doing in your life. Do it in the attitude of service. Make that your sadhana. Your work itself becomes your sadhana. So do your work, whether it's your in your career, whether it's in your a house whether it's for your family whatever work you are you need to do during the day do it as a service to god and that becomes your sadhana so whatever sadhana you are doing don't overdo it see whether musicians are practicing music whether singers are trying you know practicing every day and trying to become a good singer whether a footballer or a cricketer they are practicing everything in the world so also for spirituality it needs many years of practice right for some people if you say like they seem to be spiritually very evolved in comparison to their age then they have done it in their previous lives right so we are doing this for life after life after life so anybody who is very spiritually evolved from their childhood ages we need to understand that they have done it already in their previous lives so it's okay don't be a, in a hurry you can't hurry this thing you can't hurry the process you can't rush the process the process needs time it has to you know has to evolve gradually it's something that needs to happen gradually it can't happen suddenly if you want something very suddenly then your body mind the whole thing will shatter and you can't hold that high energy in this as you meditate, as you do your sadhana, your nervous system, your brain, your whole body is continuously evolving and coping up with you. It's also adjusting with your with your levels of concentration, with your the energies that you are attracting to yourself, with the higher energies. The more your frequencies and vibrations are increasing, are upgrading, the more your body, mind, your nervous system, your brain, everything is coping up to it. So it has to happen gradually. You can't rush it. So you have to have patience and it's a process. You have to need, you need to trust the process. It will happen. 
for sure eventually and look at yourself what what person were you what kind of a person were you a year back what kind of a person were you 5 years back 10 years back so you will understand the evolution in yourself isn't it you are progressing there is no doubt about it so the evolution that the transformations that you are going through year by year that itself is a proof that you are progressing the transformation that you yourself are going through that is the best proof of your spiritual progress too much of emotions and crying and this and that see that drains you not crying for a you know crying out of devotion or uh, that kind of thing it drains you the safest path you can choose is the path of yoga the path of kind of inner engineering that Patanjali, you know even Sadhguru ji is teaching what Patanjali taught uh, do a bit of exercise keep your body healthy eat the right food uh, choose the right places where, where you are spending time choose your the company uh, choose the people around you properly choose everything around you well so that it all supports your spiritual progress and doesn't add to your spiritual struggle and mm, do your sadhana just keep going keep doing your sadhana just keep proceeding with it without any emotion have a very logical reasonable approach to it then uh, i think uh, it's the safest way trust the process trust your guru and it's the safest way to progress spiritually another point regarding this is not to stagnate in one level uh, whatever maybe on one day during meditation or during you know whatever activity you were doing suddenly you feel very blissful or you feel very peaceful or maybe you feel uh, you see a kind of color or you know light everywhere and it's a very wonderful feeling that you have okay whatever you have regard it like it's like a journey and you are viewing uh, outside the window like you are in a car and you are going on a journey and the views are changing outside right just think of it in that way don't get stuck or don't get attached to any feeling or any level that you are in if you feel peaceful and uh, for the next few days uh, for the next few months almost you are you are every day you meditate you want that same kind of peace you want to experience that same kind of bliss no just let it go okay whatever is coming up whether it's joyful whether it's feeling of feeling of bliss whether it's a feeling of peace uh, whether whatever you are seeing whatever you are feeling experience it enjoy it and just let it go so also the t days when you feel low when you feel you, when you can't concentrate whatever it is it's you are feeling just accept it and let it go and just move on keep going with your sadhana right if you just keep go if you just sincerely keep doing what you are supposed to do in your sadhana you will eventually reach the culminating point you will reach enlightenment so just to keep doing it and another thing is concentration concentration is you have you need to take the whole of your mind and focus it in one place that is why a mantra or whatever a technique when you have concentrated the mind in one place then eventually automatically it will shut off it will become blank and that is the state of egoless state that is the merging with the highest consciousness that is nirvikalpa samadhi so to say and many of you might have already achieved that and you can say Ki, oh then i have achieved it no you haven't yet fully achieved it why because like ramkrishna dev says that uh, you can s see the ocean from afar and then you hear the waves of the ocean you can feel the breeze of the ocean that is you are nearing right you are getting nearer and nearer and then so you can you can feel the breeze of the ocean and then you are you have when you are completely there you watch the you can see the vastness of the ocean and then you take a dip in the ocean you bathe in the ocean and then at last you can drink from the nectar of the ocean this ocean of consciousness highest consciousness and you can uh, you can imbibe it within yourself so it is getting established in that state so these are all the stages of evolution so 
we have experienced that egoless state once we try to achieve it again and again and then establish ourselves completely in that state so until and unless we have completely established ourselves in that state egoless state till then we need to keep working on it there is another very important aspect to the spiritual path that is to not very uh, deeply cling on to your own definitions or expectations in spiritual life like if you want to experience sunlight then you have to experience it through your naked eye without wearing anything without having any other idea about it if you are wearing a red sunglass then you will see everything red if you are wearing a blue goggles you will see everything blue so to experience the actual truth you need to let go even of your spiritual definitions your expectations your your own ideas or you know the ideas that you have read in book otherwise if you have read oh there is a lotus in your heart then you are going to see a lotus in your heart if you think that there is a, a swan sitting upon your head then you are going to see a swan sitting upon your head the mind is a very powerful instrument so whatever ideas you are feeding into it whatever your meditation practice is if your meditation practice wants you to meditate on you know a, a lotus upon your head then eventually you are going to see a lotus on your head really so don't cling on to those definitions and expectations and that was one thing to know the truth you need to let go of your own ideas about it and another thing is you see we are continuously evolving so when you are in class 1 you have a syllabus of class 1 when you are class 2 you will be having the syllabus of class 2 so as you are evolving it can't be that even after a few years you are still doing what in you were doing during class 1 level so you will have that inner guidance continuously if you are open to it see uh, in our indian system we start with practicing maybe a mantra doing our rosary ha huh? um, counting beads or counting them counting the mantra in our fingers whatever you have been doing as you have you are practicing very sincerely for years this is only for those sincere sadhakas who have god realization in their mind this is not for common devotees you know who are very casually religious or you know who are uh, who are satisfied with you know doing uh, who are satisfied in leading their worldly life and leading a common life not for them in this video these points are only for very sincere sadhakas who want to realize the truth in this lifetime so you have to move on continuously listen to your inner guidance your inner intuition like after a few years of doing your mantra maybe you see light you experience light and then you have this uh, intuitively you are guided like you feel like meditating on the light right on that color so do that uh, maybe after doing uh, after starting your mantra japa chanting your mantra for a few times you feel very peaceful and you stop your chanting and you're just sitting there maybe for an hour maybe for two hours without doing anything just with blank mind feeling the peace imbibing the peace you know you have to trust yourself in that now you can say that well how would i know if i'm guided right or whether this is right or not ha huh, should i do this or not no you know you just need to trust it you just need to trust whatever whichever way you are into for advanced sadhakas who have been doing the spiritual practices for many years now they need to trust their intuition and uh, ramshri dev used to say the mind becomes the guru so often the physical guru often you won't have a physical guide there in present and even if you have often you know common gurus can't uh, really guide you you have to have that guidance from within you that is your own over soul guiding you you need to trust it so uh, vireshwara nanji used to say that uh, even in mantra japa uh, this uh, quantity doesn't matter quality matters 
सो जस्ट यू नो ट्राई टू प्रैक्टिस कॉन्सेंट्रेशन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर इन ऑल ऑफ दिस एज आई ऑलरेडी सेड बिफोर सो डूइंग अ लैक ऑफ चैंटिंग मंत्र जपा और स्पेंडिंग दिस मैनी आवर्स डोंट डू एनी थिंग मैकेनिकली और डूइंग दिस काइंड ऑफ प्रेयर ओ लॉर्ड गिव मी डिवोशन एंड यू आर प्रेइंग दिस एवरी डे इट हैज बिकम मैकेनिकल टू यू इट हैज बिकम लाइक एन ऑटोमोट ऑटोमेटेड रिकॉर्डेड वॉइस विद इन यू नो डोंट डू दैट यू नो वेन यू प्रे प्रे विद द बिलीफ दैट यू वुड बी ब्लेस्ड विद इट सो इफ यू हैव आस्कड वंस इन द प्रेयर जस्ट लेट इट गो एंड द यूनिवर्स हैज लिसन टू यू एंड इट विल गिव यू गिव इट टू यू इन इट्स राइट टाइम वेन इट्स राइट टाइम फॉर यू सो डोंट द स्पिरिचुअलिटी डोंट मेक इट समथिंग मैकेनिकल डोंट मेक इट रिपिटेटिव डोंट मेक इट रोबोटिक ऑटोमेटेड काइंड ऑफ थिंग whether it be prayers whether it be everything do it with fervor with sincerity with a lot of yearning uh, then the results will be much more faster and quicker even for advanced uh, sadhakas sometimes it happens that you have advanced a lot you have been practicing for years and you have achieved maybe a lot of spiritual experiences but you haven't yet reached the point of enlightenment uh it happens that sometimes you are again engulfed with a lot of work or involved with a lot of worldly life and you are somehow you it seems like you are overwhelmed with uh you know tr- uh, overwhelmed with many things happening in your life uh and don't feel nervous or anxious in those times just go with the flow maybe it needs to happen maybe that is some cleaning up that is happening so let it be done and uh, when that cleaning up has been done again you will achieve that stable spiritual uh level where you can again proceed evolve on your own so whatever needs to happen will happen you have to trust you know the universal consciousness you have to trust your over soul that you are being guided and you will be guided uh till the end uh and there's no need to feel anxious at any point of time and sometimes you know uh, sadhakas feel that oh uh, even at advanced stages why am i being uh, why am i why do i have still desires for a luxurious life or desires uh, worldly desires of something else ha huh? and even for that don't you know don't criticize yourself don't judge yourself because when you are trying to balance your spiritual life with with tackling that desire you know you you never know maybe for fulfilling that desire the career you choose the place you choose for your work whatever you are doing in your life maybe through you you are an instrument for a lot of welfare in this world so maybe you will establish something uh you will start something which will be a lot of good for you also and also for the world so even if at advanced stages of spirituality you have certain desires in your mind don't feel guilty for that don't feel uh you know don't feel anxious or bad about yourself for that uh and you know those six sins about this lust and greed and this and that this is all just 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 nonsense you know just let go for that whatever you feel just keep on doing your spiritual practices and know that you are being guided right whatever desires this character feels this is not you right you are the eternal ever pure soul who is residing outside this video game so this character whatever desires whatever is coming up in this character's mind in your character's mind is maybe for some welfare in this world you know it will do good not only to yourself to others also so whether it be monetary success economic success whether it be a uh, pursuing a luxurious life whether it be something else you know there is no 
patan you know there's in hinduism this patan kind of uh, notion there is no patan in spiritual life so to say whatever needs to be cleared will be cleared whatever stays stays and it will always be helpful for you and to others so trust the process and just keep going and you know you don't need to compromise often spiritual uh, aspirants they feel like they need to sacrifice you know their family your friends and they need to devote themselves solely to spiritual progress future spirituality is not that future spirituality is going to be all inclusive and that future is already here so spirituality is going to be is is all inclusive so you can pursue your career you can pursue monetary success you can pursue whatever thing it is that you want you feel this is your life's purpose within even it if it be temporarily like whatever you feel now just go and go for it do it you want to do this go for it you want to do that go for it with that just keep your spiritual practices going on that's all and everything is temporary like you are doing a job temporarily after a few years you don't want to do it anymore it has become boring you want to do something else go for it whatever you feel this is for you you have to trust your intuition that this is for me and whether even if you are failing even if it's a failure that experience was needed for you so just go wherever you are led by your own intuition you don't need to listen to anybody else for that so there might be more things that i that might be you know helpful for us on the car but i am only sharing what i can remember now so hope these points are helpful jai ma keep progressing let us all keep progressing and our presence will contribute to this world automatically jai ma